So big news with our Baltimore Ravens as Tyler Linderbaum is dealing with an injury. It seems like the Baltimore Ravens revealed what that secret play that Lamar Jackson threw the other day was. And we got plenty more stuff to talk about. Team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It only takes less than half a second. Let's get straight into it. So Tyler Linderbaum. Um, he, of course, one of the best centers in the league, in my opinion. He's one of the Baltimore Ravens, and I know this is some high praise, but he's one of their best, most consistent players, in my humble, small, meaningless opinion. But I think Tyler Linderbaum is one of them guys. He's like that, and he got that it factor for sure. But he's hurt right now. He's dealing with an injury. And let's read Jeff Zrebik's article from The Athletic so we can dive a little bit deeper into it. He said, Ravens head coach John Harbaugh said that Linderbaum, one of only two returning starters on Baltimore's overhauled offensive line, is dealing with a soft tissue kind of thing and will be reevaluated next week. Now, I know longtime Ravens fans, even short time Ravens fans, when you hear John Harbaugh say soft tissue injury, that's scary. That can be very, very scary. But fear not, because um, he did say that he should be back sometime next week. Uh, we'll be very patient with Tyler. He's having a great camp, and some of those young guys need a little more work. Anyway, it kind of works out for us. So John Harbaugh letting us know, like, look, don't worry about it. It's okay. Tyler Linderbaum should be all right. And that is good news to hear about him because, again, he is so just consistent. Tyler Linderbaum is great, man. Those two first-round picks from a couple of years ago, they have been nothing short of amazing. Tyler Linderbaum and Kyle Hamilton, they just been lights out, man. And they've been such pillars for the Baltimore Ravens offense and defense uh, as they continue their quest to get another Super Bowl. Hopefully they can be this year. But anyway, another conversation for another day. But um, yeah, with, with Tyler Linderbaum, we, we have to trust John Harbaugh's word on this because like we've talked about with John Harbaugh before, years ago when he would give us injury updates, he'd be like, mm, Harbaugh, yeah, I don't believe you. But over the past couple of years, Harbaugh done cleaned up his rep. And now when he actually says somebody's going to be back at a certain time or somebody's going to be out for a certain amount of time, he has been on the money. Now, sticking with the offensive line, uh, Andrew Voorhees is somebody that we had a lot of high hopes for going into this offseason. But I didn't know that the hopes were this high because he was valued as a very good pick last year. He was valued as somebody that could come in when they got healthy, of course. And they could contribute. A lot of people felt like he was a steal. But who knew, missing an entire rookie season, that he could end up being the favorite to win a job as a starter. Let's read this also from the same uh, athletic article from Jeff Zrebik. It says, Andrew Voorhees, a seventh-round pick in 2023, who missed his entire rookie season as he rehabbed the knee injury sustained at the NFL scouting combine, is the clear favorite to start at left guard. So going into this offseason... Uh, it, again, it was talked about a lot, even in like mini camp OTAs and stuff. He'll be out there and be working with the starters sometimes or whatnot. But still, uh, training camp is when these positions really get hammered out and they really get determined like, all right, this person's going to start. That's going to be the backup and so on and so forth because the pads are coming on. They're getting more physical. Um, but with Andrew Voorhees, that, that's saying a lot right there, in my opinion. But it's nice that we're starting to get the offensive line kind of cleared up on who's who. Obviously, Linda Baum's going to be the starting center. Obviously, Ronnie Stanley's going to be the starting left tackle. But beyond there, it's a bunch of question marks. A lot of jobs and positions are up for grabs. Speaking of that, they said the Ravens will decide between either veteran Pat McCary or rookie second-round pick Roger Rosengarden. There's less clarity at the right guard spot, but the Ravens are giving converted offensive tackle Daniel Filele a 2022 fourth-round pick a long look inside. So he's getting a shot. He's getting a shot. But um, that is good to hear. Now, as far as Patrick McCarry versus Roger Rosengarden, I think it's going to go to the rookie. And I don't think that's a shot at Patrick McCarry, but I think it's just because I think they want to keep Pat McCarry as that sixth man. Since he already knows how to play every single position on the offensive line, I think they're going to want to keep him in that role that he's just been so accustomed to and he's done well at. Uh, he, he's the relief hitter almost because if somebody goes down if somebody gets hurt or somebody just straight up just needs a rest or something like that Pat McCarty can come in take their place spell them for a little bit if they're dealing with a little nagging something or whatever he could take care of it for a little bit and then they, they can come back or if he needs to take over for the rest of the game Pat McCarty can do that and the Ravens can still run their offense effectively so I think it's going to go to Roger Rosengarden but 
Time will tell. And continuing to stick with the offensive line, but in a different type of way. Ronnie Stanley, yesterday, he posted to his Instagram story this picture that you see right here, and he says, I'm going to go get it. Now, a lot of Ravens fans have been speculating like, oh, is this the play that Lamar Jackson threw, the crazy accurate pass? Was this the formation? Was this the one that everybody was talking about that they were forbidden to go into detail about exactly what kind of play it was. Or Ravens, do they have some trick plays in the bag that they just don't want to let get out, especially so early in, not even preseason yet, but in the off season? Is, is this the one? A lot of people feel like it is. And if so, like we heard the reports about Ronnie Stanley being the healthiest that he's been in a very, very long time. But seeing pictures like this, seeing him go up and get it like that, that confirms everything that we heard, that Ronnie Stanley is in the best shape of his NFL life. Bleacher Report, a couple of days ago, they published an article about which undrafted rookie free agent from each team they think has the best chance to make the squad. Now, initially, when I was thinking about Baltimore Ravens, I was like, hmm, undrafted rookie free agents. Maybe a running back, but I thought maybe Dayton Wade because, again, they seem really high on him. He, he reminds me of Zay Flowers. Um, but th that was probably the, well, maybe offensive lineman because they got a lot of question marks there. Maybe a defensive lineman because they seem like they are a bit thin on the defensive line. But this pick actually shocked me, and they chose safety. Bo Bray from University of Maryland. Let's see what they had to say. Says so the Baltimore Ravens have a nice trio of safeties at the top of the depth chart in Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, and Eddie Jackson. They employed plenty of three safety looks that took advantage of Hamilton's versatility last season. And yes, this is why us as Ravens fans, we different. We different. What other team do you know out there whose fans are clamoring for a third safety? What other team's fans do you know get and got that excited over the possibility of us signing a third safety. And then when it happened, we went crazy because it's like, okay, Baltimore Ravens actually got somebody who's a ball hog. But anyway, continuing. Says, with Eddie Jackson replacing Geno Stone, the Ravens might want to ensure that they have proper depth at the position. That's how Bo Bray could wind up making the roster. Now, I wonder if this article was, well, I, I saw it. I don't think it was published before. Yeah, it wasn't published before the Ravens signed um, Daryl Worley. So maybe Bleacher Report, whoever published the article, maybe they were unfamiliar with Daryl Worley and everything that he brings to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, there's our Darius White. Let's, let's just continue reading though. It says, Bo Braid has some versatility himself. According to Pro Football Focus, he lined up in the slot as a box safety and deep at Maryland. He showed the ability to stick his nose in the run game while also carrying tight ends up the seam. Okay, man. Hey, if he got that versatility now, watch it. Watch it, because again, the more you can do, but for him, well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll read first. It says, the Ravens' recent signing of Eddie Jackson could complicate Braid's path to a roster spot. Our Darius Washington will likely be the fourth safety, so Bo Braid will have to convince the coaching staff that he's worth keeping on as a fifth safety. So yeah, this, this doesn't include Daryl Worley at all. So Bo Braid's chances of making the team is tough. Because, again, he has so much in front of him and so much experience that's in front of him. Obviously, you got your top three guys like they mentioned, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Eddie Jackson. Uh, and then you, I, I figure that they'll keep their Worley as well. Ardarius Washington, if, if they're going to roll with five safeties, I think Ardarius Washington has the best shot because, again, versatility. That's what a lot of these guys bring. That's what three out of these five safeties bring. They bring a lot of versatility. Kyle Hamilton, Ardarius Washington, and uh, oh, and Daryl Worley. Not to say Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson are not versatile. They the ball hawks, though. But you got your ball hawks, and then you got your, these versatile safeties that can play so many different positions. So that's a great problem to have, in my opinion. But then where would Bo Braid fit into the mix? Would the Ravens actually go would, would they even go five safeties? That's tough right there in itself for them to decide to go five safeties. But, hey, if they do that, okay. But would they be willing to go six? That right there, ugh, I don't know. Now, for those of y'all that get down like myself in Madden, then you will love this because the ratings have been coming out for Madden every single day. Now, there's some ratings, especially like Kyle Hamilton's. Nah, they, they got to fix that. How do you have the best safety in the game with like five, six safeties rated? Anyway. 
Lamar Jackson, the quarterback rating came out today, and Lamar Jackson is exactly where he should be at, in my opinion. Let's look at these. So the top 10 quarterbacks. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. He is a 99 overall. I got no problem with that. It is what it is. Uh, Lamar Jackson is a 98 overall. Like, I'm surprised that Madden actually gave him. I'm, I'm shocked because... I'm so used to being like, well, why Lamar Jackson so low? Like, what's going on with that? What but for them to have him at a 98 overall, thank you. Thank you, Madden. Three through 10, I don't care nothing about. I, I, I really could care less about the ratings after that when it comes to the quarterbacks. And I know we go, oh, George, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. I don't care nothing about that. You can have that conversation somewhere else. But well, Lamar Jackson is exactly where he needs to be, in my opinion. Now, it's time to... Make him join the 99 club. So I, I can't do nothing about that. That's all up to Lamar Jackson. Now, something that we forgot to mention was another injury, which also happens to be a soft tissue injury. Remember, we talked about those, but um, this one, we don't really have a clear uh, explanation on exactly when this player will be back, and that's Deontay Hardy, and that's why he's been out the past couple of practices. Uh, Harbaugh said that Deontay Hardy has a nagging soft tissue lower leg deal, but... He does believe that he will be back soon. So, Harbaugh, we're going to hold you to that. Um, now, with the preseason game being, I want to say, next Friday, I believe, um, then he, if he practices early in the week, then I could see him playing a little bit in there. But if he doesn't practice till later on in the week, I, I think they will hold him out and just wait for the next preseason game to show him off. Yesterday on Bleacher Report, we did a 53-man roster prediction for the Baltimore Ravens, but we had some trouble when we got to the secondary because, of course, you know, the Baltimore Ravens, they got like 80 safeties on the squad and got like 86 cornerbacks on the team as well. So to pick and choose exactly who we thought were going to make it, it was tough. But with the cornerback specifically, it got really, really hard for me because Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Arthur Millette, Nate Wiggins, TJ Tampa. But I felt like mm, that can't be it. Or Darius Washington, he like safety slash corner, a little bit of both. But I had him labeled as a safety. So I, I left him off the, the cornerback list. But I felt like the Ravens would just, they would need another cornerback. But who would it be? Would it be Trayvon Mullen? Would it be Pepe Williams? And I said no to both of those. And I actually put Jalen Armour Davis because I felt like the Baltimore Ravens, I feel like they really like him and Pepe Williams. But with Jalen Armour Davis, I gave, even though he's been dealing with injuries for the first couple of years, uh, just like Pepe Williams has too, but I, I gave him the nod because I think Ravens really like his potential and they like his athleticism. And I mean, obviously he's a cornerback, so he got to be athletic, but he got uh, uh, some extra traits and some extra speed and size and whatnot. But anyway, I just felt like it was very coincidental that Jeff Srebik said this about him. He said, uh, Armand Davis had another strong practice, forcing several incompletions and getting his hands on a few footballs. He's probably improved his stock over the past 10 days more than any player on the roster. So with Jeff Srebik saying that about Jalen Armand Davis, that's great for him. That, 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 that's extremely great for him because I've been saying all offseason just how tough it would be for him to make the squad. Um, but with him doing stuff like that and him continuing, because, again, Jeff Rebick said Alma Davis had another strong practice. So he's stacking practices, and that's what you got to do. That's a good indication for him. The Ravens defensive line is looking like it's going to be led by Justin Matabike, of course, who got his big deal. And then also Michael Pierce, who was really good last year. Didn't get a crazy amount of like stats and numbers. But when you watch him play, it's like, oh, yeah, Michael Pierce is a baller. But then you got the depth guys, the guys that are behind those, the guys like Broderick Washington, guys like Brent Urban, guys like Travis Jones, who Harbaugh feels like this could be his yeah. Um, this from Dress Rebick and Travis Jones spoke at the press today and he said Tra Travis Jones feels like having a rush plan will take him to another level this year. Jones has had a great camp. He's causing the old line problems pretty much every practice. Harbaugh predicted a breakout. And hey, hopefully he takes the same route as Justin Matabike. Literally the only thing holding Justin Matabike from breaking out sooner 
was opportunity. With Travis Jones, he's doing all the right stuff. If he's making these plays in practice, that's where it starts because when you make the plays in practice, coach sees that and they say, okay, you know what? Get this guy more opportunity in the actual game.